reef or road. Scientists warn if the ants declaring Kaikoura's coastline is pushing sediment from the slips into the sea, it could spell disaster for the pawa and crayfish populations that make that um, coast so famous. Clearing State Highway 1 for traffic could also compromise the food web, which is key to the area's big tourism drawcard of whales and dolphins. The scientists are urging caution when it comes to using legislative shortcuts which would allow work to clear the slips to go ahead which people do want without going through the usual process which would protect the coast. Kate Gudsell reports. The initial 7.8 magnitude earthquake raised the seabed along the Kaikoura coastline, stranding populations of power, crayfish and other sea life. In some parts, the coastal shelf was raised more than five metres. A University of Canterbury professor of marine science, David Scheel, says he understands the urgency of getting the roads functioning again but the reefs are already compromised. If you can imagine a rocky reef that the tide goes over and suddenly a lot of material is dumped on top of it, you have to wait until natural processes remove that material before any marine life will settle onto it and survive and thrive. And so the real question is, is how limited is that inshore rocky reef along that area? And are we willing as a nation to sacrifice those reefs for a number of years in order to clear those roads? The sediment will mean sunlight, needed by seaweed for photosynthesis, won't penetrate the water and the productivity of the ecosystem will drop. Juvenile organisms such as power, mollusks and crayfish will also find it difficult to settle on the rocks because of the sediment, which has been described as being like gloop. A University of Canterbury marine ecologist, Sharon Goldstein, says the productivity drives a lot of the richness and biodiversity of the Kaikoura coastline and it could have a cascade effect. The whales, the dolphins and also the seabirds actually it will be greatly affected if the productivity uh, drops off. A lot of the young fish that the seabirds feed on come up to feed on that phytoplankton and that zooplankton created within the, the surface waters relying on that productivity and, and clarity in the water. So. Yeah, it certainly feeds up all the way up to the, the larger iconic species. The Power Industry Council says the Kaikoura region produces about 10% of New Zealand's exports, and about half of that comes from the area affected by the coastal rock uplift, which amounts to between 40 and 50 tonnes of power a year. It's also the most important recreational catching area in the South Island. The council's chair, Storm Stanley, says you can clear the roads and take care of what's left of the shore's habitat. It's been an ecological disaster along there. The coastline's uplifted substantially, but there is still some surviving habitat and there are still reasonably large numbers of surviving adults that were in deeper water. So it's critical for the recovery of that piece of coastline that we don't make the damage worse. And if large amounts of slip and rubble were to be tipped on to the remaining good habitat, it's not going to help at all. Professor Shields says the question of how the reefs have been limited by the quakes and what impact the sediment dump would have needs to be known before action on the debris is taken. We should have that sort of information before they get a hard and fast plan of just uh, taking it and dumping it and I'm sure somebody's thinking about that. The final piece of a trio of legislation allowing the government and councils to remove the debris is making its way through Parliament. For Checkpoint, Cork Kate Godsell, 10A.